what are the things that will completely change astronomy over the next hundred years? Like if you transport yourself forward a hundred years, what are the things that will blow your mind when you look at, wait, what? Would it be just a very high resolution mapping of things like, holy crap. Like one surprising thing might be, holy crap, there's like earth-like moons everywhere. Yeah. And another one could be just totally different devices for sensing. Yeah, I think you, usually astronomy moves forward dramatically and science in general, when you have a new technological capability come online for the first time. Um, and we kind of just gave examples of that there with the solar system. So what kind of new capabilities might emerge in the next 100 years? The capability I would love to see is not just, I mean, we're, in the next 10, 20 years, we're hoping to take these pale blue dot images we spoke about. So that requires building something like JWST, but on an even larger scale and optimized for direct imaging. You'd have to have either a coronagraph or a star shade or something to block out the starlight and reveal those pale blue dots. So in the next sort of decades, I think that's the achievement that we can look forward to in our lifetimes is to see photos of other Earths. Going beyond that, maybe in our lifetimes, towards the end of our lifetimes, perhaps, I'd love it if we, and I think it's technically possible as Breakthrough Starshot are giving us a lot of encouragement with, to maybe send a small probe to the nearest stars and t start actually taking high resolution images of these objects. There's only so much you can do from far away. If you want to have, and we can see it in the solar system. I mean, there's only so much you can learn about Europa by pointing Hubble Space Telescope at it. But if you really want to understand that, that moon, you're going to have to send something to orbit it to hopefully land on it and drill down to the surface. And so the idea of even taking a, a flyby and doing a snapshot photo that gets beamed back that could be, doesn't even have to be more than 100 pixels by 100 pixels, That even that would be a completely game-changing capability to be able to truly image these objects. And um, maybe at home in our own solar system, we can certainly get to a point where we produce crude maps of exoplanets. Um, one of the kind of the ultimate limit of what a telescope could do is governed by its size. And so the largest telescope you could probably ever build would be one that was the size of the sun. There's a clever trick for doing this without physically building a telescope that's the size of the sun, and that's to use the sun as a gravitational lens. This was um, proposed, I think, by von Eschleman in like 1979, but it builds upon Einstein's theory of general relativity, of course, that there is a warping of light, a bending of light from the sun's gravitational field. And so a distant starlight, it's like a magnifying glass. Anything that bends light is, is basically, can be used as a telescope. It's going to bend light to a point. Now, it turns out the sun's gravity is not strong enough to create a, you know, a particularly great telescope here because the focus point is really out in the Kuiper belt. It's at 550 astronomical units away from the Earth. So 550 times further away from the sun than we are. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, that's beyond any of our spacecraft have ever gone. So you have to send a spacecraft to that distance, which would take 30, 40 years, even optimistically improving our chemical propulsion system significantly. You'd have to bound it into that orbit. But then you could use the entire sun as your telescope. And with that kind of capability, you could image planets to um, kilometer scale resolution from afar. And that, that really makes you wonder. I mean, if we can conceive, maybe we can't engineer it, but if we can conceive of such a device, what might other civilizations be currently observing about our own planet? Um, and perhaps that is uh, why nobody is, is visiting us because there is so much you can do from afar that to them, that's enough. They, you know, maybe they can get to the point where they can set our radio leakage, um, they can detect our terrestrial in, in, you know, television signals. Um, they can map out our surfaces. They can tell we have cities. They can even do infrared mapping of the heat island effect and all this kind of stuff. They can tell the chemical composition of our planet. And so that might be enough. Maybe they don't need to come down to the surface and study anthropology, you know, do anthropology and see what our civilization is like. Um, but there's certainly a huge amount you can do, which is significantly cheaper to some degree than flying there just by exploiting cleverly the physics of the universe itself. So your intuition is, and this very well may be true, that observation might be way easier than travel. From, a, from our perspective, from an alien perspective, like we could get very high resolution imaging before we can ever get there. 
It depends on what what information you want. If you want um, to know the chemical composition um, and and you want to know kilometer scale maps of the planet, then you could do that from afar with some uh, version of these kind of gravitational lenses. If you want to do better than that, if you want to image uh, a newspaper sat on the porch of somebody's house, yeah. you're going to have to fly there. There's no yeah, way yeah. That, unless you had, you know, a telescope that was the size of Sagittarius A star or something. You just simply cannot collect enough light to do that from many light years away um so there is certainly uh reasons why visiting will always have its place depending on what kind of information you want